Hello guys, today I'm going to talk about one of my recent DVD pickups. It is Travels with Hiroshi Shimizu. It's from the Eclipse series on Criterion. It's got four movies from the 1930s and 1940s. Um, now Hiroshi Shimizu was one of the most famous directors in Japanese cinema. He directed over 160 movies but most of them are now either lost or destroyed. Um, I believe there's only eight of his movies available on DVD. This set has four of them in. All four of these movies feature outsiders in Japanese society. For example, gangsters, poor people, uh, blind people, and Geishas. Um, they are all filmed mainly on location, either in the mountains or in villages or in a big city. None of it's filmed on sets or in studios, all relocations, hence the title Travels With. Um, most of the three of these films were filmed in the 1930s, so it's very interesting to see what Japanese society was like before World War II. Absolutely fascinating. Um, these are set during the Depression. People had no money. Um, I think they were at war with China at this time. Before World War Two. Uh, a lot of the money would have been going on the war. They had high unemployment. Um, so most of these movies about are about people who have little money. Um, Quite influenced by Yasujiro Ozu as well. Very similar. Um, Shimizu uses pillow shots in his movies, like Ozu used in a lot of his movies. A pillow shot is a shot of something that is not related to the plot itself, like image of a object, a teapot, or an image of a location, or a building. Shimizu was using these in his films. The camera work in this, these films is fantastic. The camera is nearly always moving. Um, which is very interesting. He, the use of light and shadow in these movies it was fantastic. Yasujiro Ozu didn't move his camera around very much, nearly always still, still images. Um, Shimizu and Ozu were friends, good friends.
these are similar to all the but if you move the camera around a lot compared to Ozu. I'm going to talk a little bit about each movie in the set and what I thought about them. First is Japanese Girls at the Harbour it's from 1933 71 minutes long it's in black and white and it's a silent movie it's about two schoolgirls who are friends. They go to a Christian school in Yokohama. They both fall in love with the same boy. Um, the girl, the girls are called Dora and Sunako. They fall in love with a boy called Henry. Henry is the local heartthrob of the town. Um, the town is called Yokohama. It's a very westernised part of Japan. Um, the people dress in western clothing, um, live in western style houses and some of the characters in this movie have Western names. Um, for example, Henry, Dora. They are English names. And the actors are all mixed race, I believe. This was all deliberate. Henry rides a motorcycle, which was not very common in Japan in the 1930s. Anyway, um, as I say, both of these girls like Henry. Um, Henry starts a relationship with Sumiko, who is the more confident of the two girls. Dora is quite shy and reserved, whereas Sonoko is outgoing and confident. Um, one day, Dora, Dora discovers that Henry is also going out with another girl who is older than Sunoko. Um, so Dora discovers this and she tells Sunoko. And Sunoko confronts Henry and his older girlfriend, and she's called Yoko. Sunoko confronts Henry and Yoko in a church and Sunoko gets really really angry and she shoots Yoko so Sunoko flees Yokohama she goes to live somewhere else and Sunoko becomes a geisha <coughs> Basically, the film is about Sunoko, Sunoko's downfall, and what happens to Henry and Dora. I really, really enjoyed this film. It was quite powerful. Um, I cried once or twice during this film which rarely rarely happens it's got a fantastic piano score 
great photography the landscapes and the cityscapes look amazing um, very very interesting to see what pre-war Japan was like Highly recommend this one guys. Next is Mr. Thank You from 1936. 76 minutes long. It's in black and white. And it's a talkie. This is a road movie. I believe it's possibly the first road movie from Japan. It's about a bus driver nicknamed Mr. Thank You. He is transporting a group of people from a small village called Izu to Tokyo over the course of a day. This is also set in Depression era Japan. Um, most of the passengers on the bus are very poor, all outsiders. Um, the whole movie is set on this bus. Um, the main characters are a girl's mother and the girl. They are being sold well, the, no, the girl is being sold in Tokyo. She's going to become a geisha. <coughs> um, it also features some more characters. <coughs> it's a gentleman with beard and a woman in black collar. None of the characters in this movie have names. It's basically about this man, Mr. Thank You. He's transporting these people to Tokyo. He's called Mr. Thank You because whoever moves out of the way of his bus, he shouts Arigato. To whoever lets him pass. <coughs> Hence he earns the nickname Mr. Thank You. Um, he also helps passers by. Because he gets to know people on his journeys every day. He helps out people passing the bus, like a group of women or some farmers. <coughs> He's a very nice guy. And over the course of the movie, he gets to know the girl who is being sold as a prostitute in Tokyo. He develops feelings for her over the course of the film. That's basically the plot. Again, it doesn't sound very interesting. But you get to know a little bit about all the characters on the bus over the course of the film. All very interesting characters. It's a very fun movie. Again, it features fantastic outside locations. Uh, you see the mountains, the countryside, what the people were like in 1930s Japan. If you like Japanese cinema, this is a must watch.
This is a classic Japanese movie. Next is The Masters and the Woman. It's about a pair of blind masters, male masters. Um, they go to a spa in the, in the mountains. They go there to work as masseurs. Blind masseurs were very popular in Japan at this time. Anyway, one of the masseurs falls in love with a woman who is staying at the spa. Um, She's a very attractive woman. Um, there is a, a man and a boy also staying at this spa and they both develop a relationship with her as well. Um, over the course of the movie we discover that there is a thief in the spa um, and this lady gets accused she becomes a suspect um, so the blind man um, tries to help her escape the spa that's basically the plot it's about the masses and and the woman it's got a bit of everything in this movie it's got drama um, comedy and it's a bit of a love story as well it's got five or six different characters in this film. Again, it doesn't sound very interesting, but lots of things going on, as well as the main plot. Again, this was filmed in the mountains and in a spa looks fantastic the costumes are really really nice uh, it was very very interesting again highly recommended last is ornamental hairpin from 1941 70 minutes long it's in black and white and it's a talkie. It's about two people, a soldier and a woman. What happens is the soldier is staying at the spa again in the mountains and he accidentally cuts his foot on a hairpin. Um, he tracks the lady, the owner down, the owner of the hairpin, and she decides to come to the spa to apologise to this man because he has to stay at the spa to recover. And over the course of the film, the woman who comes to apologise, the owner of the hairpin, she starts to fall in love with this man but he doesn't realise that this woman is falling in love with him that's the basic part of the movie um, again it doesn't sound very interesting but 
there's quite a few characters in this one. Um, also features a, a, a professor who is very, very grumpy. He always complains about the guests and the noise and the food. It's a very funny character. Um, as I said, it features eight or nine different characters. It's all filmed on locations. Um, it's all got beautiful scenery. Um, great camel work again. This one has Chisu Ryu in this one, who featured in Ozu's movies, Tokyo Story, etc. He plays a young man in this one, a soldier. Um, he was unrec unrecognisable at first. Because in Ozu's movies, he usually plays an old man. Also features Kinoyo Tanaka, very famous Japanese actress. She starred in a few of Kenji Mizuguchi's movies, like The Life of Oharu. Ugetsu Monogatari and Sancho the Bailiff. Um, this was very, very good. It's a love story, but it has a bit of comedy in it, a bit of drama. Um, excellent movie. I highly, highly recommend you buy this set, guys. Um, it's got four fantastic movies. They're all very short. Range from 60 minutes to 76 minutes. So they are all easily digestible. The time flies by when you're watching them. The total running time is about four and a half hours for all four movies. Um, they'll feature fantastic photography, beautiful locations, interesting direction, and very, very good acting. They're all fascinating to watch. Um, they're all like historical timepieces. Of course, there isn't that many movies out from Japan that were filmed in the 1930s and 40s. <coughs> um, Hiroshi Shimizu was a very, very good director. Highly underrated in the West. Not many people have seen his movies. Uh, these four movies were on a par with Ozu and Mizuguchi's movies. I highly recommend them. This set is fantastic and must buy okay hope you enjoyed the video sorry about my voice I've got a bit of a sore throat at the moment hope you enjoyed the video please subscribe bye for now